choosing the optimal encoding time quality trade-off. And in this case, we're gonna be looking at this within the context of an X.264 preset. And all encoders or codecs have configuration options that trades off quality versus time. And you know, most ATVC encoders have this, some H.264 encoders, particularly in FFmpeg. And the technique I'm gonna use lets you visualize how they differ and choose the best option. And, and as I said, we're gonna be looking at this within the context of the, um, the uh, choosing the preset for X.264. Okay, so what are presets? Presets are simple ways to adjust multiple parameters to trade off encoding speed versus quality. And if you've got an X.264 encoder, whether it's you know, FFmpeg or a lot of the cloud encoders, you're gonna have access to these parameters. And medium is generally the default preset. Are you, you know, is medium necessary? It's gonna be much slower than some presets. It's gonna be much faster than others. Is this the quality uh, encoding time trade off that you want? And I would use this technique, you know, anytime I look at an encoder, anytime I look at a new codec, um, this, is, this is the kind of analysis that I apply. And what I do is you choose your test file, you know, looked at the test files when, within the context of the book that I wrote that I mentioned a few seconds ago. Um, and then I encode to different presets that are targeting around 96 VMAF points. You know, that, that's, you know, again, I want to target that because that's the effective zone of the, uh, that's where, where people are going to be encoding their files for the most part. And that means that all files are going to be encoded at different bit rates because the variation here, as we saw with the CRF calculation, I can't encode them all at, you know, three, four, five, six megabits per second. I've got to customize them to hit that 93 to 95 VMAP point. I measure encoding time, I measure average VMAP, VMAP, and I measure low frame VMAP. And low frame VMAP is the lowest quality frame in that encode. So this is average VMAP and the use of the um, X.264 presets here, red is bad, green is good. So this tells us that in terms of average quality, ultra fast and super fast, no surprise there, gives us the worst quality for these files here. Very slow, not placebo, gives us the best in all cases. So this immediately tells you that if you're using placebo, not only are you extending time significantly, you're also getting lesser quality than you get with very slow. But interestingly, the total delta here, the difference in quality between the green and the red is only about 6%. So it's not a life-changing event. And although the difference, you know, again, going back to the six VMAP points, here it's 89, here it's 96, most viewers would notice that difference. And then here's low frame VMAP, which is the lowest VMAP score for any frame in the video. And here, you know, we're seeing concentration down here in terms of overall low except tutorial, which is the, the PowerPoint video. And we're seeing a scattering here, but we're seeing a 33% difference in overall delta between the highest and lowest quality, meaning the difference between the lowest quality here and the highest quality here ranges up to 30 or averages 33%. And we see some scores in the 50. So that tells us that you may not care so much about overall quality, but low frame quality is, is a particular issue with ultra, ultra fast and super fast, which is why you typically try and avoid them in all instances, except for, for live encoding when you need to use them to get the, uh, to produce the frames. Okay, and then we plot all this out with encoding time. So this is, this is total quality as a percentage of the total quality. So it starts out pretty high. And then this is low frame quality. And we see this down here in a range that's pretty scary. And then this is encoding time. So this tells us that very slow takes 31% of the encoding time of placebo which again, not only if you're, you know, if you're using placebo, not only are you wasting time, you're tripling the time of encode, you're losing slight quality, not, not significant, but, but you are losing a bit of quality. So the average quality here at super fast and ultra fast is probably okay, but you probably wouldn't wanna use these unless you absolutely had to because of the low frame quality here. Faster is probably the first acceptable quality from both an overall quality and a low frame quality. Um, it makes very little sense to go beyond medium. So if you're using slow, slower, or very slow, you're getting minor, minor quality improvements. And you know, and realistically, you're, 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 here you're you're cutting your encoding time by by 50%. Here you're you're coming close to doubling it. And if you're not, 
you know, if you're not paying by the encode like this, if you're not, you know, if, you, if you're just using a service that you pay by the, you know, you pay per minute of video, maybe you don't care. On the other hand, if you're running your, encode, your own encoder or your own encoding form, these types of decisions can, can add significant uh, capacity. You know, if you're encoding using very slow and you cut to medium, you almost triple your encoding capacity and very few people would, would notice the difference. And then once I go through this analysis, I'd also want to go through and see if there were any visible differences in the frame plots. This is ultra fast versus medium. And we see not only is the overall score much lower, there are a lot of scary areas here. Whereas if we look at fast, which I said before was the, the probably the lowest quality acceptable preset, we see very few areas where the fast file really drops below the medium file, indicating a potential quality issue. So the conclusions regarding X.264 is faster makes, you know, faster is the best preset for if you're, if you're seeking maximum throughput, makes very little sense to go beyond medium, um, and placebo never seems to make sense.